Well, so it's a Thursday morning. Of course, we are still in the middle of the year. Nobody thought that the year would be running this fast. But um, we pray for strength from God and we pray for um, action, the strength to be able to do the things that we want to do. Let me welcome you to Good Morning Ghana, of course. It is your best and most instructive news analysis show on your airwaves across the length and breadth of the country. My name is Kosia Free, and we are coming your way live from our studios here at Rage in Accra. I'm sitting in for Dr. Randy Abbey. I'll quickly run through the stories on the front pages of the newspapers, after which we'll get into the discussion. So I'll begin with that of the Daily Graphic. On the front page of the Daily Graphic, 2024 elections. Dr. Baumia preferred candidate. NDC most popular party. 23.1% undecided. That's according to a poll um, uh, which was carried out or presented in a press conference yesterday. Jinapo inaugurates Akimoda Minerals Commission Office. Ghana, Korea signed $2 billion deal to drive development agenda. Parliament stakeholders agreed to timely release of NHIS funds. Scheme owed 2.4 billion Ghana cities. Six billion Ghana cities invested in TVET. That's according to the director of TVET and the Ghanaian Times. So that was a daily graphic. The Ghanaian Times. Outcome of South Korea Africa Summit. Ghana secures $2 billion financial deal to implement key projects over a five year period. Lance Minister inaugurates 5 million Ghana City Ultra Modern Akim Oda Minerals Commission Office Complex. Retain part of profit in Ghana as Antihini to mining companies. Wa East District records 147 teenage pregnancies only in the first quarter. Oh, well, that's a Ghanaian Times newspaper. The Daily Guide. Daily Guide. 2024 elections. Baumia leads Mahama in survey. Fire gas structures at Sekil. And of course, there was a wide um, spread of, uh, uh, what do I call it, doom so, power outage yesterday. And uh, we're hearing that the reports uh, are suggesting that this was a reason for the wide power outage in most parts of Accra between the hours of 6, 6.30 seven there about up till about 10. Um, the whole of the night I, I still had to sleep in it. So um, those of you who slept in darkness last night, um, that may have been the cause. We are still waiting for an official report anyway. NLA hosts European lotteries. And Dr. Amin, our Ghana and Korea Inc. $2 billion development deal. Dr. Amin, Adam, in a handshake with Cho Taiyo. That's the Daily Guide newspaper. The New Crusading Guide. Baumia leads Mahama in latest polls. The military profile of the governor in the jungle un unmasked. Brief on Lieutenant Richard Antonma Jaka. Um, you have his batch number there on the front page as well. Ghana partners Japan to build capacity of public sector workers. Experts deliberate on supply or deliberate on supply chain traceability at 2024 Kariska Supply Chain Summit. Ghana's first manganese refinery project to commence in August. That's the new crusading guide. And of course, at the top front corner of the paper, former President Kufu agrees to serve as patron of Kempon Football Academy. That's the new crusading guide the insight the insight stop complaining economic hardship global that's according to vice president dr bahmoud baumia as reported on the front page here of the inside newspaper if you are a man with balls personally swear affidavit to oppose the past tape sami jemfi dares attorney general godfrey dummy Planned sale of Snate Hotels to Minister. Ablakwa insists state lands to lose hugely as he gives blow to blow account 
of offer details. Ali Masmadi Kweku Jehu Apia, remembering an extraordinary man of inspirational legacy. And World Environment Day, Zoom Lion embarks on tree planting and clean up exercises as it leads Africa in environmental action. And that's the Insight newspaper, The Daily Statesman. The Daily Statesman. Baumia Lee's poll as preferred presidential candidate. I'm sure we'll delve into this um, this morning. If we get the opportunity, we'll be speaking to Dr. Smasap and I'll, I'll confer with the producer to see. And we'll be asking questions if we get the opportunity of the, of the data sampling, of the research method, and, and so on and so forth. So you have to stick and stay with us this morning. Ghana's first manganese refinery project starts in August. And Accra to host 2024 IDUEI conference. $2 billion deal sealed with Korea to drive development. And Akimoda gets new minerals commission office. That's the Daily Statesman newspaper. The new finder. The new finder. Ghana Korea Inc. $2 billion deal to enhance key priority programs for five years. And Baumia leads Mahama by 4.4 points in Professor Smart Sapon's poll. Nigeria, fuel scarcity hurts businesses, motorists as union calls of strike, and minority sabotaging economy through misinformation. That's according to the leader of the majority caucus in parliament, Honorable Alexander Afenyo Makin. And that's the finder of the new finder newspaper. The Daily Post. Daily Post. Mahama will win 2024 election. Gusi Tano says so. And pro NPP lecturer turns out funny result of so called opinion poll. Ostensibly to counter credible poll, which has Mahama far ahead of Dr. Baumia. And Adamus Mining Saga, why High Court ordered for IMC to run operations and protect state interests. That's the Daily Post newspaper. And of course, that does it for the stories on the front pages of the newspapers this morning. I am Kwasia Free, and I'm sitting in for Dr. Randy Abe. My guests are already in the studio, but I quickly, quickly would have to take a short break. When I am back, we'll get straight into the discussions. We have a lineup of topics this morning. You want to stick and stay with us. Welcome back from the break. This is Good Morning Ghana. Let me quickly do this one and uh, let it be off the way. So we are saying, are you desperate of getting a toothpaste that will take care of all the family and save money? The recommended family toothpaste is Kel 360 Toothpaste, approved by the Food and Drugs Authority. Kel 360 Toothpaste provides you and your family with all-around dental protection throughout the day with freshness. Kel 360 Toothpaste is good for kids, children, and adults. Let your family be a proud family when they step out constantly using Kel 360 Toothpaste. Kel 360 Toothpaste brightens your teeth, prevents cavity, and with its cool mint, gives you a fresh breath throughout the day and protects the gum from decaying. For consistency and quality, Use Kel 360 toothpaste. Kel 360 toothpaste, another product from Samara Company Limited, produces of Sasu. It's available in all supermarkets, malls, provision shops. Call Samara Company Limited on 0246 864 798. Kel 360 toothpaste, happy smile. Now, enjoying the fruits of your labor is as important as enjoying the mansions of your labor. The pains of climbing stairs when not exercising could be challenging for all ages. But don't worry anymore. Lifts and elevators have got you covered with the best portable American pneumatic vacuum elevators 
on the market today. It is a simple self-supported elevator for both homes and offices. And guess what? It can lift your goods too. Wheelchairs can fit in and they come in three custom-made models. It is affordable and can be installed within three days. Visit lifts and elevators at Sakumuno or call just or call them on 0200-535-515 or send a mail to elevators at gmail.com for consultations and the best solutions in easy vertical movements. And uh, you, you, you can patronize them. We've announced their numbers. My, my guests are already seated in the studio. And uh, from my immediate left is the Member of Parliament for Botiano Englishi, Amafro, who is also the Deputy Minister for Information. Uh, Honorable, good morning, and thank you very much for joining us. Honorable Sly Tete. So, Mr. Tete is in the studio. Good morning. Thank Good you morning, my brother. How are and you? congratulations to you as well. Thank you very much. Uh, your first time here after you were uh, um, approved by Parliament as the Deputy Minister of... I'll, I'll come back to that. Kojo Chumbuafu is a former Executive Secretary, Free Zones Board uh, Authority, and also a member of the NDC. Good morning, Kojo. Good morning, sir. And thank you very much for joining us How as well. How are you? I am doing well. I hope you are good too. I also want to congratulate Sly. Mm -hmm. After seven years, he was finally given his position as <laughs> Fatima's deputy. So, seven years he has been the chief executive officer of the National Youth Authority, and oh, occupied since, uh, lots uh, of other seven positions. Seven years he's, uh, he's been uh, <laughs> now he's Fatima's deputy. So, Kojo is not informed. We know that. We know that. Oh, I'm informed. I'm, I'm, I'm saying you've now been made a minister. So and. <laughs> You are Fatih's de deputy. So. What is wrong with that? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Fatih, good morning. How, I hope you are okay. Uh, so you, uh, uh, you know that there's a lot of misinformation <laughs> coming out of that. I, I want to go straight to my discussions, but I'm, I'm, I'm told, I announced earlier on during the um, reading of the front pages that um, the doom so yesterday was probably caused by um, 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 some fire that gutted some items at circle yesterday i'm told that we have the visuals if we have it a uh, place let's have it now Madam, I used to them. I used to them. I'm taking a video. See, see the place that I stand to off the fire. If you go to that place, we talk to the truth. Offer more. This place, this place, you're not often finished. So now the day that I stand to off the fire, we don't talk about the place, the fire, they go. They should go off that place, so they are not off in that place, Master. You understand? You see the fire. See them for you. If you are not being the stand to off the fire, look at him. Jesus. Jesus. So that's, that's it, that's reported um, by our newsman. It says some parts of Ekumog at Kwame Nkrumah Circle in Accra were gutted by fire. Um, wooden structures near the railway line were affected um, as of yesterday. Eyewitnesses said that it began around 5 p.m. And the footages that we have shown you and those on social media um, saw many of the squatters running uh, off after minor explosions were heard, actually. 
and one of the affected residents said she had lost about 3,100 cities in cash. And uh, they are praying to God that the government will come to their aid. Some traders near the Odor drain also um, salvaged what they could. And uh, this caused the power cuts, and that's where our interest has been in Adabraka, Newtown, and its environs. So it wasn't in Adabraka and Newtown alone. I mean, after Awushi, Ablikuma, and all of those places um, had power cuts, but um, was restored later in the night. Uh, let, me, let me begin with Honorable, and uh, I will start with the 5G issues. All of the deals surrounding the next gen infra co 5G G deal, people talking about MTN and, and, and so on and so forth, market imbalance. I mean, what is all of this about? Well, thank you very much, my mm. brother. I'm grateful. And let me say a good morning to my friend, uh, Kojo. I haven't been here in a while after my primaries. Mm -hmm. I have not been here, or neither have I been on in the media space until I was appointed deputy minister, successfully gone through vetting, and of course, a prior approval of parliament on a special recall. And they're swearing in by His Excellency the President, I take this opportunity to thank people mm. of this country, and then more especially His Excell Excellency for the opportunity to also contribute in serving uh, Mother Ghana. Uh, Kojo is saying for seven years I've just been made a deputy minister. I've always been grateful that whatever role I've been given, I will continue to serve. I've served in many, many capacities for this country and for this government. I started, I served as a member of the Regional Lands Commission Board. Mm -hmm. I served as a CEO, National Youth Authority. I've been serving as a board chair. I've served as a board chair of the uh, Ghana Enterprises Agency before I've been appointed uh, as a deputy minister for information. I'm very comfortable working with uh, Fatima to Abubakar as a substantive minister for information. Of course, she has been at the ministry before for four years as a deputy minister. Before she was a deputy communications director at the presidency, she was moved to the ministry of information as a deputy minister for four years and now the substantive minister. I have a lot of respect for her. We have a mutual respect for each other. Uh, we are working very, very well. That is more important. Government has overall. We have uh, set and we have visited a number of media houses on our media tour. Our engagement, we were here. Our engagement were quite straightforward and simple. That will lead a team for uh, uh, accurate uh, information dissemination and management of public sector information across the spectrum. And we are committed to ensure that we deliver government information undiluted as it is. So we we'll continue to set the issues right. Uh, people, uh, what we are battling with uh, today, not limited to only this country, a lot of things are happening at the ministry. Issues of misinformation and disinformation, advent of AI uh, in the media space, it, it poses a lot of challenge to us, even in the election year, not only uh, Ghana, but in this year there will be over uh, 70 elections across the globe. The challenge of all these countries has been uh, misinformation and disinformation and deploying uh, AI tools to dilute information. We've instituted some measures at the ministry for fact-checking, and we employ the media to be able to fact-check whatever they are putting out there. The security of this country is important to all of us, uh, so we must all be guided. Let me come to the 5G spectrum and the noise about the 5G spectrum. I think it's important that we set the records straight. And, uh, it is allowed or is expected that highly technical environment of this nature, most people will not, as it were, understand what all this is about. Uh, what is uh, frightening and uh, is a minority joining the fray without proper information, either for uh, political expediency, because we are in election year, so. You throw mad at government and, and expect to benefit from it politically. I think it's much ado about nothing. It's a usual political ranting. And I believe that industry players, if you have sampled the, 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 the conversation that has uh, arisen after the press conference by the Minister for Communication, I think that the industry experts, there's calm among the industry experts. Nobody is speaking. Those pushing an agenda against this forward-looking a proposal by government and of subsequent decision by government, I think they either lack understanding of what is happening or they are just being mischievous. Mm -hmm. And that's what I can say about the minorities' press statement. But let me come to the issues. What are they? 
It's just a 5G spectrum that Ghana government is set to roll out. The modalities, how do we roll out this 5G for the full benefit of this country? The fifth generation spectrum is a huge national resource, and we must be careful how to deploy a resource of that nature mm. for the full benefit of this country. What do you intend to do with your fifth generation spectrum? Ghana has an agenda to digitalize this country for digital inclusion, financial, digital financial inclusion, and for uh, business uh, enhancement, and then bridging the gap, the digital gap, and of course, keep rural urban migration. So we have had 2G, 3G, 4G, and now 5G. The history of this country has always been to auction the spectrum to the highest bidder. Mm -hmm. Anybody who buys a spectrum is motivated by financial gains. So once the person buys the spectrum and his financial uh, 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 profit-oriented obligations are met, then the person is cool. Therefore, uh, in nine years ago, 2015, the then NDC administration auctioned the 4G to MTN. They bought the 4G. After nine solid years, we've had only 15% penetration of the 4G spectrum in this country. Mm -hmm. So how do you continue to talk about all the things with the cost efficiency? Because they are motivated by, so when there's monopoly, you cannot control the cost. So the cost efficiency, accelerated development, optimized spectrum usage, and of course, enhanced rural coverage. So the rural coverage is completely missing. You will realize that the cost of data will obviously go up because if you are still locked up on your 2G, 3G, Downloading data in itself will become problematic and therefore the cost will be high. So what is government motivation today? We are saying that there are industry players. Mm -hmm. Why don't you have a resource sharing for all the industry players so that you risk the cost? Okay, isolate risk factors, especially cost, so that everybody that has a role to play using the spectrum will have opportunity to fully develop for national integration and the national coverage as it were, so that the cost will come down. So government clearly set out that I'm not going to auction the 5G as we did auction the 4G. In as much as government is looking for money for this economy, we think that overriding benefit of national coverage of our 5G will bring us more resources and money and capacity than just auctioning the uh, 5G as we did with the 4G. So we said that no, Bring all the industry players together. Set up a special purpose vehicle. Don't be motivated by getting the money today as if you want to sell your nat nat natural resource without adding value. So add value to this spectrum. Let them develop it fully. So our target is that within six months of rollout, because of the existing infrastructure we have and the players that are coming on board, we will have 50% rollout in six months. And that brings a lot of benefit to this country. And subsequently by 20. Uh, 30, we should have a full national coverage of the 5G spectrum. Then all the benefit that comes with the spectrum will be shared equally. Digital gap will bridge, rural urban migration will be kept. You can do business anywhere you are in this country. Yes, sir. And not only limited to this country, but you go to other jurisdictions within the West African sub-region. Now, so that is the motivation. It's a special purpose vehicle. So they talk about that government had formed a company a company that is formed one week old and had been handed the 5G, that cannot be true. Because in the instance of a special purpose vehicle, you don't need a history of long experience. A special purpose vehicle could be incorporated today and take up a project. You look at the companies that form the SPV, the track record of these companies. Mm -hmm. What are the companies we are talking about? We have both local and international companies. Plus government of Ghana. In this case, government of Ghana we have KNET. If you know KNET, mm. the history of KNET, the capacity I know of KNET. I know KNET. Over the years, since 1996, it's a great opportunity for a local company like KNET to partner big companies like Radisys, Tech Mahindra, Nokia, uh, Ascend Digital, to form a plus the MNOs. MNOs, mobile network operators in this country. That is AT and Telecel. The only company that is not on the SPV, and even that there's an opportunity for them to join, is MTN. 
But why are they not on? That's, that's, that's a concern of... So, I mean, not, not, there, not political. I'm concern, coming. But I'm industry coming. players. I'm coming. So there's no inhibition on their part not to join. Everybody has been asked to join. So that we share the platform. All these companies I mentioned as a specific role to play, they are pushing for auction. And we are saying no. We have a history of the 4G. After auctioning the 4G for nine years, we've had only 15% penetration. What is the guarantee when you auction it today and the highest bidder buys it? Can give us the national rollout we are expecting. Again, if you look at the facilitation, a company like Nokia, Radisys, Geo, Tech Mahindra, what they are bringing on board to this country, it's amazing. And but those within, are the benefits. Within the, auction, within the auction, are you not going to put out terms of reference? We have had that in previous years. Uh, then then we, the problem will be I, you I, not I, being I, able I, to I, enforce, I, I'm, I'm enforce the, the T1. I, I, I'm, I'm coming. Mm -hmm. You had the 2G, 3G, 5G. Mm -hmm. What is wrong with government not auctioning, but rather giving the playing, even playing field for all companies involved? Isn't that forward looking? The convention has been to auction. What is the convention? Has been to auction. What is the convention? To auction. Does the convention benefit you? Or what we are the SPB The convention has to be enforced. It has not benefited us. You haven't enforced it. You are not. Have you, you enforced it? What is enforcement? As a here? government. What is enforcement? The penetration so, so the, the, the penetration. natural resource yes. belongs to government. Mm -hmm. We've always been bemoaning uh, selling our natural resources in each raw state. Mm. We've been told many times that we should add value to our nat natural resource. Mm. So what is wrong government adding value to the spectrum? That gives us more benefit. I'm telling you, it gives you more benefit mm. to the spectrum than you are going to sell the mm. spectrum. Today, if you have a company like uh, 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 Radisys, Geo, that is coming to Ghana to partner in this SPV with over 477 million uh, uh, customer base, Nokia, Microsoft, all coming to our space because government has taken such a bold decision. So why they call for auction? So again, that misconception pedal out there that we, uh, there's no transparency and we have to go for tender and all that. It, the decision is not to auction to warrant tender in the first place. So there's nothing like we should have gone for tender, we didn't go for tender, minority is calling for that the deal is opaque and all that. There's nothing like that. All the industry players, the benefit we stand to get, and I'm telling you, six months of rollout, when government has this partnership with all these people, in the long term, we will rake in more revenue because we are hoping to create jobs for the young people of this country. So if you have digitalization to that extent, it will create more jobs. Both the NDC and MPP are promising tech jobs in this country. How do you achieve that? So we have a history. So when we are rolling out the 4G and 5G nationally, it means digital inclusion, curbing the rural urban migration, and closing the digital gap. These are the benefits that we stand to get. And investment in this economy when it comes to tech. For instance, Nokia will be providing the state-of-the-art uh, 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 technology innovation lab here in Accra for software development for our engineering graduates. We have had 4G over nine years. We haven't had the benefit of coming into space, this space, with companies like Tech, Tech Mahindra, uh, Nokia, Tech Mahindra, Radices, Microsoft, and all that. But this similar decision of government. Then the second thing they talked about is that they will be given time to pay over the next 10 years. I think it's very fantastic. Because, you see, to develop your 5G fully, it's very uh, uh, expensive. So government is saying that, take your time. Give us an initial uh, 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 requirement. Then every year as you work, you pay. What it means is that successive government will have the benefit of this 5G spectrum, the resources that are coming to develop this country. So... We are not in haste to say, rake in everything today, finish it off, and leave future generation in limbo. But we've thought carefully about the future generation, the benefit we start getting from today. And per the analysis of industry players, if we have national coverage and we have 1% to 2% subscription of this facility we are talking about, we have 10% subscription, you are going to have about 2% growth in your GDP. Quantify the 2% growth in your GDP today to what you would have sold the, 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 the 5G for on auction today. The benefit of the special purpose vehicle far outweighs, far, far outweighs the sale of the 5G spectrum today. So I think that this noise 
people should be able to talk to industry players, experts. 16 countries have rolled out 5G spectrum in Africa. Check what the, 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 the reportage, check the news about what Ghana has done. Everybody is looking for money. But it's not just about today. You are looking about the future. You are looking at about the investment your 5G could bring you. Should not be motivated by the highest bidder. Take the spectrum, mm. profit oriented, mm. then this whole country is left off. We have built fiber optic facility in this country. We have built a rural telephony cell site to have rural, rural connectivity. What is wrong when we partner an institution or industry players to be able to roll out 5G to every part of this super, country? Super, super brilliant, super. So I but have you engaged which enough? One? Have you engaged the NDC? Have you engaged the telecommunication uh, industry? But, I mean, but, but who are the industries in the telecommunication industry without KNET in this country? You know what KNET stands for? Who have are you they? engaged the chamber? I'm saying that. But all of them are part of the chamber. All of them are part of the chamber. The MNOs. They are the biggest players. No, but if you do with the chamber, then please, you have engaged with everybody. But I'm but saying that. If you engage with one and say that it they are is part not of the one. chamber. Telecell mm -hmm. is a member of the chamber. Mm -hmm. AT mm -hmm. is a member of the chamber. Mm -hmm. KNET is a member of the chamber. Have you engaged the chamber? If you have not engaged them, how did you come by them coming on the SPV? If you have not engaged them, these are active players of the chamber. Have you engaged requisite to stakeholders? And this like is what? Requisite, no, please, please, a, a please, please, stakeholders. please. There's nothing. We don't engage in this. We engage parliament. We engage industry players. You can so political, political parties. Please, 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 please. Government policy. Once government and cabinet has taken the decision, it is on. Uh, it is behoves on uh, 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 the sector minister to engage well, uh, 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 stakeholders as it were. Mm -hmm. That is why uh, the presser was mm -hmm. done. Mm -hmm. When parliament reconvenes today, mm -hmm. I have no doubt in my mind that the minister will be in a rush to parliament to brief the committee and subsequently the parliament as a whole. Could you? The members of parliament are the representatives of the good people of this country. There's nothing wrong. Members of parliament have been engaged. I let, mean, let, me, read, uh, let uh, me read something to you. The, the, okay. let, let me hold but on. let me put the question to you. That no, you okay, okay, so go you, ahead. Go ahead, go ahead. Uh, so the question I want to put to you is that um, according to the honorable minister, mm -hmm. members of parliament have been engaged. I said, I mean, no, I said when parliament reconvenes, reconvenes. they will be, because I'm aware, mm -hmm. because I, I, I've been a member of the communications committee, mm -hmm. I'm aware of these processes of rolling out a 5G. But the, where we are today, that's what I said, and some people misquoted me in the media. I said, parliament is on recess. The minister had not had the benefit of meeting the committee on the final conclusion. And when parliament resumes, the minister will come and brief the And that it is not a necessity to auction. Looking at the, 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 the options on the table and the relevance of what the government is doing now, can I then say that NDC hasn't done enough research to be, to be attacking the, you see, the, 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 the... Sly just mm. caught himself just in time because he knew that parliament has not been engaged. Let me, let me read something to you. The minority in parliament has raised serious concerns about the legality of the 5G deal awarded to Next Gen Infraco by the Kufuadu Baumia government. They argue that the transaction being finalized without the knowledge or approval of parliament is a violation of the law. The government has previously announced plans to launch the 5G network within the next six months, and it goes on and on. And then the, apart from uh, says, uh, as I, I'll, I'll the, the minister, the the, please, please, please. The Minister for Communication and Digitalization defended the, the decision, stating that Next Gen Infraco was specifically created to handle the 5G. She said, she added that no other infrastructure company with the capacity to do that exists in Ghana. You see, the problem with what Sly is saying is not how beneficial it may or may not be to this country. It is that the procedure that they have used is a violation of law. Which is? You haven't consulted parliament. And again, Sly said something that shocked me. He said that it is better for them to realize revenue over time than to auction the spectrum and collect money at once. When did you realize that? Should we go to a Japa? When you sought to, to do a Japa, did you realize that you could wait for money 
to come to us as a country over time. When you collateralized um, um, state revenue that was incoming over time, like ESLA, did you know that the money coming in over time was better than collecting the money at a go, blowing it on unnecessary things, and then us paying into the uh, um, fund over time, basically paying into a black hole. That SML thing that they did, some of the monies that went to SML came from SL. So when the Sly and his group learn that taking the money over a period is better than just collateralizing uh, um, funds, collateralizing uh, um, revenue, blowing the revenue, doing things like a japa. So, whatever good that he has sought to enumerate here over time, one, what the NDC is saying is that what they did was not grounded in law. And laws are made Laws are not made for good people. It is okay for you to tell us that, okay, this is what we anticipate. But do the right thing. Do the right thing. If parliament is on recess, you, you yourself stated that parliament was recalled so that you were, uh, for you to be uh, let, let um, me confirmed. Clarify. Let me clarify. Point no, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. You talking, I'll, I'll I didn't talk. You. You are not, not. Parliament can be recalled for you to put this in front of them. But you didn't do it. You just did what you want. And now you're telling us that after parliament reconvenes, the minister will go inform them. So you inform them after the fact. Another thing is that your prior bad acts is what makes many people uncomfortable, even if you may have goodwill, even if whatever you're trying to do is intended. And I'm talking about soul sourcing. You formed a company one week before you handed them the COVID testing at the airport. Right? You formed a company. Within a few days, the Bankai Inland Terminal had been handed to them. I could go on and on and on. You've done it again. With the 5G. And yes, there are Ghanaian companies in there. But what is the percentage of what they really owe? Own within, that, within that whole thing. So, Without the knowledge, the full knowledge of what has gone on, right? People have a right based on what you have done in the past and your history of corruption to question these things. Because you could easily have gone to run. You said you are the vice chairman of the communications committee. Great. You could have gone and run this by, by the communication committee. Everybody could have been assigned of what was going on. And then within the framework of parliament and whatever rules you operate within there, you, you, you do whatever. So, for me, as far as I am concerned, whether what you are doing has, has good intentions or not, you have to admit that the process and the procedure to which you have used is not the right procedure. And that is what the minority is decrying. And then also to say, oh, there is no um, uh, company in Ghana that can do that. You see, as an engineer, and I, I've been in, in, in this business for a long time, we have said in this country so many times that, oh, we don't have the capacity to do this. So let's go here. We don't have the capacity to do this. So let's go. Without any empirical evidence whatsoever. In the past... Ghanaian professionals, engineers, and what have you, were, were, were one contracts, and they were told, if you don't have the capacity, go and source the know-how from outside. So you are the principal uh, uh, consultant, so to speak. Now, it is the other way around. They give the contract to the foreign companies, and then they come and look for some, uh, a measure of tokenism to continue ripping and raiding this country of our, of our resources. So, Sly, what we are saying 
is that you should have gone through the right procedure. You cannot have a, a hen before an egg. What you should have done was to take it to parliament. Agree amongst yourself in parliament that this is the way we should go or this is the way we shouldn't go. You don't form a special purpose vehicle, decide within one week to give them a contract, and then come and sit here and defend it and say that uh, uh, the, the, the companies have this capacity, that capacity, this capacity. That's, that's neither here nor there. And like you yourself said, oh, the MT, MTN uh, won the, the auction, and when they won the auction, they only did 15% uh, penetration. So that may or may not be true. <laughs> the question is this. If even those who, who won an auction did 15%, what will happen if you simply hand it over to somebody with a promise? Hope, your hope may be springing eternal, but at the end of the day, you simply have handed the 5G uh, 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 spectrum over, whatever the intentions are, to a special purpose vehicle without due parliamentary procedure. That's the problem that people are having with it. And I think, I, I think my small suggestion to you is that you people should learn to do the right thing because this is not the first time. Like I, like I said, you did it uh, uh, during the COVID time. You handed over a contract to a, a, a company that was formed within, a, a, what in that case, it was like two weeks. 17 days, they got it and they made 87 million per their own reckoning. They made 87 million dollars out of it within a few months, trans shipped all the money outside, and uh, um, the government of Ghana was left with 7 million. This is data from the Ministry of Transport. That is what Ghanaians are decrying. You people have done this too many times and you don't seem to learn anything from it. Whatever the intentions are, please go and do the right thing. Go and do the right so thing. So you, 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 you agree with Honorable Sly that from what he's explained, the intentions are good. But your I said frustration maybe. Uh, maybe. is that they haven't followed the right you procedure. See, Sly says that the people follow my logic. Mm -hmm. When the 4G was auctioned, mm -hmm. people who actually won the auction mm -hmm. have not done due, uh, have, what they, they are supposed to do. They are supposed to do. So what happens to those who have given it to for free? You see, uh, again, so, let, let me offer some I'll, I'll come, education. I'll come, I'll come let me offer some education I'll come because you see. Okay, so you so let, let, let me offer some education. Don't use condescending mm. language. Don't educate me. Uh, no, not I, in I, respect I to education. you. Well, there are you, many you may, people in this. You country. may not need education, but no, on this no, matter, you, what I'm on, this, saying, on this matter, slide, uh, could you, could you, slide, slide. Could you, you, you see, your, your habit your, of always wanting to you, I can do the same thing. Honorable, I'm saying this. You may be, you may be more informed than I am on this topic. But when it comes to being educated on something, we have laws in this country. You don't do the wrong thing and come back and offer me education. That is what people are saying. If it is the case that what you are doing is indeed beneficial to this country, use the right procedure. Because this country, your administration came to power on the, under the auspices of saying that Things like so saucy, I'm quoting a Kufu Adichie, I think of the past. And throughout your administration, that is all you do. And people can see through it. You have just offered here a thesis about how the people who won the 4G did not utilize the space that they were given to the benefit of this country. And I'm asking you, if the people who won it by auction didn't do what they were supposed to do, what happens to the people you gave it to for free? And it is very, very log it is a logical argument I'm building. Kwesi, if you come and ask for my, for my daughter's hand, eh, and I charge you big dowry, you pay the diary. You go and you go and abuse my daughter. If you came and I gave it to her to you for free, would you do worse? This government is, is synonymous with process abuse. They are synonymous with doing the wrong thing and, and flouting all the things they said before they came to power. So what would you have 
have them to do. They should go. They should do the right thing. They should move away from the special purpose vehicle. They should have done auction. What exactly? Do Whatever you it is they wanted to do, they should have gone to run it by parliament. By parliament. First. So your concern is that they should have gone to parliament. Of obviously. Okay. So if I parliament think. can be recalled to approve ministers, parliament can be recalled, should be recalled to, 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 to ratify. Look at this thing. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, 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 let me come again. To let me share with my brother and for our benefit of our viewers. Mm. I mean. You are misinforming the public with a role, and then you can even go back and read the minority's statement. And what is it that they are calling for? That it must come to parliament. You see, they are not saying that the special purpose vehicle should have come to parliament. He's not going to parliament for approval, and he won't go to parliament for approval. And no law has been breached. No law. And they have not even questioned the special purpose vehicle. So if you keep here and making reference to a one week old, your own minority, they ran away from it. When that misinformation was put in the public, carefully, when your minority crafted their statement. I have the statement I, I can read it you, to you. Please, I'll read the please, first part please, you. please, please. You see, there is no law. Once there is no procurement, there is nothing like entity and order. So the decision is that we are not going to sell it. So that will not occasion any tender to call for competitive bidding or anything. So anybody going on that route is misinformed or want to be mischievous or ignorant about the whole fact. The minority, as it were, were saying that the country has been committed to more than a year. They were quoting the Public Financial Management Act, PFM Act, Section 33, 1 and 2. The PFM Act they quoted is in respect to when you commit this country Okay, when you commit this country to financial obligations, and the legal brains are listening, they are watching to all of us. When you commit this country to uh, 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 financial obligations for more than one year, mm. in this deal, mm. government is not committed. I just granted a number of interviews and I've said that. Mm. Government legal advisors will respond to that particular provision of legality they've raised as it were. But I'm saying that when the minister comes to meet the committee and brief them. It is not to say that it needs parliamentary approval as it were. That what doesn't it? When you come, look, the work of the ministry, the, the, the oversight. Okay. Look, the, the, you see that? So you, you please, you I'm, 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 I'm coming. You don't, I'm coming. You don't, Oh, you can you allow, allow, oh, allow, oh, allow me? Allow me. See, allow me. You, you, you see, there's a level you don't of think, consultation. You don't think that, you see, you don't think that yes. the nature of this project that yes. we are talking about, the 5G spectrum, mm needed a parliamentary, not necessarily approval, but consultation with parliament before... What, 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 you see, there's a level of consultation. Ministers do consultations almost all the time. Parliamentary consultation. Yes, that is what I'm saying. The parliament, when you come to parliament, mm. there are committees responsible for each sector. Has that been done? No, that is what I'm telling you. Even in their own letter, mm. they are aware, we've been briefed, that there's a process to develop our 5G and it will be launched. Mm. Even the NDC, in their 2020 manifesto, page 89, 88, 89. That they, I am aware. Yes, I, I am I'm coming. I'm coming. So, what we have done, consulting, mm. as it were, or mm. briefing the subcommittee on communication in parliament, does not necessarily warrant or to say that I'm coming for approval. That's the point. Of, so, I'm not saying that consultation is not good. They shouldn't even consult parliament or inform parliament as it were. Mm. It is not every information you take to parliament that we are going to seek approval. That's the point I'm making. It is not everything you do that you come to brief parliament. That means we are coming for approval. There are two different things we are talking about here. Seeking parliamentary approval and briefing parliament. There are two things. So you shouldn't confuse the two. That the fact that you come to brief parliament, it means you've sought parliamentary approval. When the provisions of law and statute does not support that a particular deal must come for approval as it were. To warrant to say that you must recall parliament for that. So the minister has no act in law or in practice. Um, please, please, you, you, please. I, I'll come back. Uh, please, I'll come please, back. Take, it, take it easy. Look, in this telecom sector, mm. all over the world, countries and industry players and the consumers alike are always pushing for faster, efficient, Cost effective Obviously. of data mm. that enhances business. You use volumes of data here. Mm. Aren't you worried about the cost of your data? So, what is happening today is that 
we are pushing for a shared platform that will go a long way to reduce the price. So the platform we have for accelerated uh, 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 rollout and efficiency will give us the cost efficiency we are talking about. So share the platform for industry players. Mm -hmm. So once they share the platform, again, let me come to what he said, that you auctioned it and then you couldn't enforce it. How much more when you give it for free? You see, Knet has the role they play. MNOs has the role they play. So everybody has a platform open for even competition, mm -hmm. for you to develop the unique services you provide. All right. So it is not to say that... Okay. I'm coming, I'm coming. So it is not to say that mm -hmm. you're giving it for them for free. Mm -hmm. It enhances competition. But when one person buys it, is motivated by his profit margin and business orientation, so he can decide to restrict access to you. But in this case, all the players in the industry have been given a shared platform to develop your business competitively. All the players will make profit too. They will make profit. And but they, I'm, they no, be, but, but I'm coming. Be. But I'm coming. Once uh, today, some of them are rural focused. But when I buy and I'm not rural focused, I limit myself to the, All right. to the commercial areas alone. All right. So let it me... should be underpinned by what please. your orientation is as a government. Okay, let me go what to you want to do. Let me let go to Kojo. So express, please, let me express surprise. You've always at, so, uh, expressed yes, surprise. At a member of parliament mm -hmm. and a now minister telling us that a multi year contract that they commit this nation to to do what hold on hold on should not go to parliament for approval it is in the pfm public financial management I Act, section 33 but i just mentioned it but i you i explained it to, to you to parliament. i explained it to you fairly oh please 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 you see stop this condescension my friend you are you are not you can't explain anything to me you understand explain it to yourself listen whether you should have gone to parliament or not. I talked about the consultative process. And you, you, you started by saying, oh, look at, read your own uh, statement. They put the thing just up there. What does the first paragraph of the NDC minority statement say? says, the minority caucus in parliament has noted with grave concern the decision by the Baumian government to give away Ghana's 5G spectrum to a shadowy entity, Next Gen Infraco Limited, for the next 10 to 15 years. Right? What does the, what's that section 33 of the Public Financial Management Act says? An act that Parliament has assented to. So, for me, I'm simply saying that, Sly, at the very least, the process and the procedure was wrong. <laughs> so, <laughs> what you should do, what you should do is go and do the right thing. All right. But, but you see, what, what you're saying, I, I, the, I'll move the on. process I'll, that I'll you claim on. is wrong or I'll right must be premised in law. Must I'll, be premised in law. I'll move on. So um, and we have... We have uh, 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 PFM is no law, right? <laughs> but I've told you the interpretation of the PFM Act. I quoted it here. Uh, but you are reading from your... your, your no, your I'm not reading it. I just let, so let, there's... Let, a, I'll move on to my two other topics. I just so I have, to, you've come I have, I have the voter to issues to around... Yes, you should go to Paris. Issues around the voter register exercise. And then yesterday, Professor Smasapun um, did a press conference on uh, a poll that he had conducted um, on the 2024 elections. And there are a number of reports that are coming out. Um... Daily Graphic says 2024 election, elections. Dr. Baumia preferred candidates. NDC most popular party, 23.1% undecided in the poll. So baseline survey report by a political scientist has highlighted the strengths of the National Democratic Congress NDC as a party and vice president Dr. Mahmoud Baumia as a candidate for the 2024 general elections. It states that the flag bearer of the NPP, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, leads as a preferred presidential candidate for the 2024 general elections, although the NDC remains the preferred party for majority of the voter population. The survey was conducted in April 2024. The survey report showed that 38.9% of the respondents favored Dr. Baumia, with 36.1% preferring the flag bearer of the NDC, John Dramani Mahama. The report 
However, said the NDC led in popularity with 38.8% as a political party uh, Ghanaians were likely to support in the coming election. The popularity of the NDC, it said, was higher than the NPP in Bono East, Greater Accra, Northern, Uti, Savannah, Upper East, Upper West, and Volta regions, while both the NPP and NDC were at par in popularity in the Western North region. Quote, a very large number of prospect prospective party supporters, 23.1%, were undecided on the party to support as at the end of April 2024. Until they decide to take the interest of one of the political parties, they may remain floating, the report said. Quote again, most undecided region is Western, with 38% undecided party supporters, while Northeast becomes the most decided region, with only 9.8% undecided party uh, supporters, unquote. A smaller party, uh, all smaller parties put together are unpopular across the country as of the 30th of April 2024, the report added. So, I'll... On this note, take a quick break, but I've just given you a brief on uh, the report by Professor Smasapon. If we get him on the line, we'll ask him one or two questions and come back in the studio. If we don't, I'll come back from the break and begin with Kojo Chumbwa for on the polls. Um, uh, some uh, the political parties have expressed their, their reactions or concerns on these polls. So stick and stay with us. We'll be right back. You welcome back from the break. This is still Good Morning Ghana. We are live here in the studios. Uh, conversations have gone on. But let me quickly run you through um, another one for our sponsors. And what does wealth mean to you? Do you want to live like a tycoon? Well, remember who's got the moolah, got the power. Ghana's newest lottery game draws live on Adome TV at 9 a.m., 12 p.m., and 6 p.m. daily. Now pick up your phones, tablets, and computers and download Game Packs app on Play Store. You can also play on our website at www.gamesparkgames.com or by dialing star 946 hash on all networks. Just choose your numbers from 0 to 9. It's easy to play and easy to win. Charlie, make we play this game and make more moolah. That's cash. Nobody beats our odds in Ghana. Game Park Games, more moolah more power. This game is regulated by the National Lottery Authority and it's not for persons under 18. Please play responsibly. Aya Soko, the Akosumbo Dam be big, but Betway's cash out be bigger. Betway is giving you more control over every thrilling bet you plays. Enjoy the biggest and most reliable cash out in Ghana on Betway without any hassle. Sign up today at betway.com.gh. Terms and conditions apply and not for persons under 18 years. Regulated by the Gaming Commission of Ghana, Betway gets way more. Now, Blue Jeans Energy Drink has been on the Ghanaian market for over 20 years. We already know what it does for the body. It contains vitamins and nutrients like vitamin B2, B3, B6, B12, as well as taurine and guarana, which are known to boost your strength and energy, as well as promote high performance and endurance. Blue Jeans Energy Drink has been tested and tried. It is indeed the best. Blue Jeans Energy Drink is for bold and active men and women. So go on, grab a cold can and power your day. It's in shops nationwide. Budgets, cash and carry limited on 020812819 and uh, you can also reach us on 0550010000 blue jeans energy drink and that does it for the second round i'll come back to the studio and uh, we've moved away from the discussions on the 5g i i'll go straight to the post by professor smasapon prof 
if you're watching, we've been trying to reach you uh, to speak to you on, on, on the methodology specifically. But we'll, we'll continue with our discussion. And the Daily Graphic has reported that Baumia is a preferred candidate. 23.1% um, people, a percentage of the people are undecided according to the poll. Let me, let me come to you now. Could you chumbo? Um, Kwesi, that poll to me sounds like one of Gabi Ochidaku's commission polls. But you see, the only poll that matters is the December 7th poll. The people of this country have been through a lot of pain within the last seven and a half years. If anything is to be believed in that poll, you just said that upwards of 23% are undecided, supposedly. There is, uh, when it comes to polling, there's a lot to be said for supposed undecideds because many of them do not even want to say what they want to do. But the state of play in this country today is that in 2016, when Sly and his friends told Ghanaians that President Mahama needed to be booted out because a gallon of petrol was 14 CDs and it was unheard of. Today, how much is it? It's 70 CDs. Iron rods, a ton of iron rods was 2,800 CDs at the time. Today, it is 8,200 CDs. Cement was 27 CDs. Today, it's 108 CDs. Sanitary pad, the ceramic, was 2 CDs, 50 pesos. Today, it is 18 CDs. Tomatoes. One paint bucket of tomatoes was eight CDs. Today, it is 200 CDs. Indeed, today, four moderate sizes of tomatoes are 20 CDs. One paint bucket of onions was 15 CDs. Today, it's 80 CDs. A sack of maize was 170 CDs. Today, it is 800 CDs. Gary Olonka, five CDs. Today, it is 30 CDs. One chicken, a broiler. Better than 200 CDs, you could find one. Today, if you don't have upwards of 1,000 CDs, you won't get. A crate of eggs, 12 CDs. Today, it is 65 CDs. Kenke, 50 pesos at the time. Today, it is 5 CDs. Both float, 20 pesos. Today, it is 2 CDs. 5 kilo bag of rice, 25 CDs. Today, it is almost 200 cities. And I could go on and on some, some and on and on and on and on. Where, where you were buying them from? No. For example, no. the kinky bull fruits. Where? won't cry. Tell me you will find kinky less than five cities. I mean, the, the prices you, you quoted earlier on. Kinky was 50 pesos at the time. How much was it? Even now, I'm coming. where you are buying it from. At my age, eh? at our sly and I are ages, mm. most of us may have high blood pressure. Eh? Some diabetes. Definitely, you should be taking some cholesterol medication. High blood pressure medication, Cavidolol, which is the preferred prescription of most doctors. At the time, it was 15 CDs. Today, it is 260 CDs. Four Sega, it's a blood sugar medication for diabetic patients. It was 70 CDs. Today, it is 850 CDs. Couple that with the fact that most of us have lost our savings. Before Tenofoyata became the uh, 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 finance minister of this country, nobody knew that your bank account wasn't safe. Nobody knew that you could have treasury bills, which is essentially a call account. That is, that is the reason for which you save the money. You go and ask the bank for it, and they will tell you that the Ministry of Finance says they shouldn't give anybody their money. Because the city is tanking. Nobody knew that after criticizing President Mahama's government for having 120 uh, billion CD debts, worth of debt, which encompass all the debt from Gadisbeck to 2016, today we'll be at 680 billion CDs worth of debt. Sly and his people have quintupled the amount of debt we had. When they came to power, 
Before they came to power, they talked about nuisance taxes. Everything was a nuisance tax. Esla was a nuisance tax. Am I lying? You're a media man. They highlighted Esla. As soon as they came, they collateralized Esla. So the Esla has been collateralized till 2035. And the residuals from Esla is what they used to pay that scam, SML. Where a free zone operator suddenly metamorphosed into a company that could now collect tolling on fuel. When KPMG were tasked to uh, audit that scam, the presidency came and lied about the amount of money that had been paid to them. They said, oh, around one billion. When the KPMG report was finally released under enormous pressure, we found out it was a point of 1.5 billion that has been paid to them. The people too are telling us that nobody has paid them 1.5 billion. We have lived, we live in a country where a minister stores millions of dollars in her home. The money is so much that her, her, her house help has stolen enough to build a house, buy vehicles, start uh, uh, businesses, and she didn't know. When she was caught and the relevant agencies were dealing with her, the president came out with a statement that he knows that she'll be exonerated. If that is not prejudicing a case by a, a lawyer, what else is? Throughout all that period, Sly and his people have stayed quiet. We live in a country where even during their presidential primaries, one of the MPP contestants, Kennedy and Japan, questioned what they are now a, a presidential candidate meant by if the currency is weak, the exchange rate will expose you. Percy, when we were in power, the CD to dollar ratio at the time we left power was $1. One CD to four, sorry, one dollar to four CD. Today it is upwards of 16 CDs. Just three weeks ago, it was 13 CDs. And so you know what Slice argument is going to be? He's going to talk about the rate at which the CD went up an hour time. When importers are going to import goods, do they import in rates? When you buy goods and you bring it to the country and the customs indexes the, the CIF value to the dollar, do they, do they index it in rates? All these prices that I'm telling you have gone up, did they go up in rates? And if we were doing rates, have people's salaries gone up in rates? What has rather happened is that almost everybody who had savings in the bank, your savings has lost value. If you have treasury bills, it has lost value. If you have worked for 25 years and you have saved money in the bank, and of I came to tell you that basically we've expropriated the money, and as you are on retirement now, wait, when you are 78 years old, you get the money. What is the life expectancy of the ordinary Ghanaian? The finance minister himself, then, who they claim to have, they, they claim to have fired, a few weeks ago, after he was fired, though, when the, this country went to the World Bank spring meetings, guess who was sitting in the front seat? Yes, take a while, guess. The sat finance minister, wearing white, white, reading his Bible verses as usual. So, the only polls that matter in this country is what the people are watching, how their lives have been affected, what these people have done to us as a nation. 
right? We are the only country, and you people have been playing that news read, where Dr. Baumia said, economic conditions, global conditions, how can global conditions affect everybody else and skip Ghana? Our inflation rate today is 25%. The inflation rate of Togo is 3.8. The inflation rate of Burkina Faso is 3%. The inflation rate of Cote d'Ivoire is 3.6%. And yet, Sly is going to come and talk about a uh, Ukraine war. You're, you're preempting him. Yes, because I know what he's going to say. That is those what are if the, he doesn't those. say that? Oh, if he doesn't say it, great. It's good for the Ghanaian people. But he's going to tell you that COVID and the Ukraine war. Today, Kwesi, you and I are the only human beings on this planet in a place called Ghana where we are paying taxes for contracting COVID. Why? Because this government blew the COVID money on foot soldiers, spending it, giving it to people. I mean, we had a parliamentary candidate in Sagnarigu come and tell us that she was giving money, COVID money, to give to her people. We have others who have said they access COVID money in soft loans, which they, they, they have never paid. None of that money was used to do anything. We were told that as part of the COVID relief, if you remember, we were told that we're not going to pay for water. As soon as the COVID period was over, the then information minister came to tell us that the free water that we were giving was not so free after all. If I'm lying, tell me that Kujo Ponkoma didn't come to tell us that the free that we were giving was not so free, even though when he said it was free, it was supposed to be free at the time it was free. So this is the poll that matters. Ghanaians have seen corruption. That is shocking. They have seen borrowing at unprecedented and unbelievable levels. We have a president who sits in a private jet at enormous cost to us. He flies and goes to sleep in the most expensive suite in the most expensive hotel in London. The Prince Alexander suite in Claridge's. Anybody who disputes it, the pictures are there. When he met Jordan Ayu, it was there for everybody to see. What a country. And you are talking about polls. All right. That president. And notice how in the polls, uh, uh, Dr. Baumia was more popular than President Mahama, but the NDC was more popular than, than, than the MPP. So you don't believe in it? this you country? Not, you are not going to work on it? In this country, I didn't say we work hard. We you are, you are going to work on We have concept. worked hard for eight years. Are you what going to I'm take the data you, available in the pool? What I am to, telling you, we have our data. To strategize we, as a We have our data. We do our research. What I'm telling you is the poll that matters. On December 7, Ghanaians are going to take the things I've said. And if you gave me your whole program, I could go through it. But you won't give me a, I haven't even <laughs> begun to talk about the taxes. <laughs> right? If you import something into this country, if you import a car into this country, go and read their taxes. You pay tax until the cows come home. Right? The, the, the customs decides what your car is worth, not what it is really worth. They decide. And then they tax you. They tax you. On an anipe, two tax. Ragumzo uh, uh, tax. Everything. <laughs> they, they just say you pay taxes until the cows come home. Let me, let me come to honorable now on the same issue, the polls. And... Uh, uh, there have been previous polls which you reacted to honorable as a, as a party. And then now this one is putting your head of the NDC. Well, again, I, let me say that uh, it's, it's not surprising because, you see, if we continue like this, uh, politics, I wonder where it will be in the next 20, 30 years. And uh, people... Uh, and will continue to make mockery of us as politicians. A litany of prices of things has been printed and it's become a chorus for people singing. It's been printed. Is it a lie? It's been printed. Is it a lie? Please, Kojo. I didn't when, read when, your when, when, when you were speaking, I was no, very no, quiet. No, is it a lie? I was Please. very How quiet. How much I thought they wanted to do? I, 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 I was <laughs> very quiet. Please allow, allow him. I was allow, very quiet. You allow see, him. You, you have the floor. My have the worry and the reason why I laugh at things like this is that we've soon forgotten where we are coming from. To the extent that you had ever been in power before, for eight years. So 
to be a very good analyst of the situation, you should have printed what you inherited from President Kufuor and how you manage it. And then you bring from your time to today's time. Then we'll take you very serious. This issue of comparing prices, the late Amma Benyuado and the rest, they were taking Kenke and a gallon of petrol to rallies to parliament and the rest. Recently, one did. Before did he take a gallon to, oh, to campaign? Please allow. Before did he take allow, a gallon of gallon? Allow, I thought you said on this platform, you're a gentleman. Allow him. Okay, allow, yeah, yeah. Okay. Allow him. So the speaker stopped him. And so today, they've gone back to it. They've printed litany of items. And when you were reminding him, today, if we should fact check the prices of the things he's mentioning today, you realize that some of the prices, I, I don't know where they cooked them from. It's cooked figures to throw dust in the eyes of people today. So that is what they are parading around. But there's no solution to all the things he's talked about today. He hasn't professed a single solution except to say vote for us. Vote for you to come and do what? He was preempting what I was going to say. But I thought that... But I know you. Yes. <laughs> but let me, let me serve you something good. Yes. On VOA, mm. Straight Talk, mm. Africa, mm. with Hyde Adams, mm. when Muhammad took his turn for that interview, I'll read to you what the former President Muhammad said. Before you accuse me of citing Russia and Ukraine as a reason for some economic challenges we face today. So your own mentor, the one you are hoping to become the president again of this country, he cited the issues you are preempting me to be saying. Or not mean a platform. Because when he got to the platform, he could not lie. He had to speak the truth. But when you come here, they've thrown you out to throw dust in the eyes of the people. Double standards. Listen to what former President Mahama said. He says, former President John Dramani Mahama has admitted the global events such as COVID-19 pandemic and the war in Russia and Ukraine contributed to the current economic crisis in the country. He noted that the economic meltdown that has hit many parts of the world has also taken a toll on Africa and Ghana too. This is former President Mahama speaking. And the man you expect him to win elections in this country, this is his position. The position you are preempting will be taken. He has already taken that position. And you've forgotten yourself. He's here talking about the fact that we've been indexing taxation, import duty taxes to the dollar. You have been in power. You served in executive. Were you not indexing the import taxes to the dollar in this country? What is your solution today if we should give you power? And I'm happy for one thing. You know why? Yesterday, I was in Tema when Dr. Mahmoud Baumia met the clergy and his tour of the country. Great Accra is the 15th region he's visited so far. And the clarion call is a look. These are things that are very inimical to all of us. Is that when the, the this all happened? Oh, shh. Please allow him. All the light in the do here. Allow him. So you see, oh, okay. you just talk. No solution. But I'm saying that this particular problem you are talking about, indexing import duty taxes to the dollar, this is what Dr. Baumia has to say. And yesterday, the clergyman, that is what he told them, and that's what he's been saying everywhere, that when he becomes the president, president of this republic 2025, there are three things he's going to do with respect to our taxation in this country. One, he's going to grant tax amnesty for us all to start and have a uniform rate of taxes in this country. And then the import duty, He's saying that the continuous for 67 years indexing of import duty to the dollar is going to stop. And this is how he's going to do it. So why doesn't it stop now? Oh. He's the chairman of the economic management team. Why doesn't it stop now? Please, answer so the you, question. You, you, you see, you see, let me, let, please, please, could you? Stop it. Stop, could you? stop that. People ah. watching us, people watching us, all the things Mahama is talking about doing today, when he was in power, why didn't he do them? He did a lot. And let me remind you of President Mahama. When he was the vice president, okay, he even thanked God for the death of Atameos. And on that day, when he was sworn in, he thanked God that he came to office as a vice president. He's returning home as a president. On that day, he gave a number of policy directions. Remember? I have directed... 
I have directed. I have directed. I have directed. So the transition from being the vice president to presidency, on the spell of the moment, he was directing and was giving policy directions. So what are you talking about? What are you talking about? The man says, when I become president, the lamentations you are doing here, you haven't professed a single solution to it. And the man is saying that when I become president, these are the solutions I'm putting in place. And you are here ranting. The things you are preempting that I'm going to say, your leader that you are hoping to become president had already preempted, had already said them. So don't preempt me. I showed you. No, I'm telling you. Because people watching you will know the kind of person you are. Don't kindly allow him. The people watching us. You know what he was writing? You allow him. Allow him. Look at the paper. Allow him. Russia, Ukraine. Russia, Ukraine. Russia, Ukraine. Russia, Ukraine. Russia, Ukraine. So when you were talking, you actually taking a look at it. You see? Russia, Ukraine. You see? He's quoting President Emma. So you see? No, no, no. Please. You are taking off his side. Let me quote President, Vice President Bauer. You are taking off his side. How can global phenomenon? He has the flow. He has the flow. So kindly allow allow the minister. At least you should be you see? Oh, so you are telling Muhammad to stop talking <laughs> Russia and Ukraine. You are not telling Muhammad. Oh, you have the floor. Please go on. You are not telling Muhammad to stop Russia and Ukraine. Mm -hmm. Is that what you are telling him? Look, let me tell you something. So the point is that tell Fatih in the stop face of all this, thing. tell Fatih to stop oh. telling you information. What is this? You see, you want to spoil the program. No, you, you have the flow. But I will worry. keep flowing. Don't worry. You have so let me tell you, my brother, with all the ranting, what is the solution? Mm -hmm. John Mahama, in the 21st century, where today, by the grace of God, we've increased enrollment in second cycle institutions. From 600,000 to over 1.2 million. More girls are now in secondary school than male kids today. With a higher passage rate, we are talking of technology, advancement. You are talking of Nkukonkitinkiti. That is what we should vote for you. Nkukonkitinkiti. Nkukonkitinkiti. John Mahama, he promised. Me be your president, you ma. Me mamu Nkukonkitinkiti. Nkukonkitinkiti. Abu Kono Tom. A true and what? In today's world, when we are talking of fifth generation uh, uh, spectrum, you fifth say generation. When the one million was jobs, opposition, oh. they begin to tell us that CD. I will have to. I will have to. Restrain him. Restrain him. I will have to. Restrain him. No, restrain him. I will have to mute your mic. Restrain him. You are not behaving yourself. I thought you said on this network you are just about to mute your mic. So stop this. I will have. I will come back to you and I will give you time. So what is the solution? 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 What is the uh, uh, Baumia mm -hmm. is going around promising and telling you how he can turn the challenges you are talking about today. You go around, lament, cry, and your solution is in Gukong Kitin Kiti. In today's world, we are talking We are talking about the fact that education, STEM, TVET, this is where we've taken it to. We reckon the challenges we have as a country. You enumerated the indexing of our import duty to the dollar. So if henceforth we stop the indexing to the dollar and we charge flat rates in, in CD, then the CD will regain its strength. Nobody needs to worry about the dollar anymore. These are policies, forward-looking, strategic, transformative. Then you come and sit here and tell me when you come and go come kitty and kitty. What is your solution? When you almost collapse our banking sector in this country, the, 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 well, uh, how do you call it? The, 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 those banks ahead of 2016 election, people were dying in this country. They lost their money. Again, let me tell you, he was saying that if you had your money at the bank, in your bank account, it's no more safe. We're talking of investment. We're talking of pension funds. That is true. It's not individual bank accounts that were tagged, uh, 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 head uh, cut, as we said. So when you are putting out information, be kind to yourself and to the good people of this country. Look, with all the noise we are talking about today, when you have power, you've done it before, to the extent that they printed bank accounts with names of leading members of Kufo's administration with the amount of money or to deceive this, the good but, people but, of this country. But, but, but for the haircuts, that one was true. It affected uh, It people. is true, it but I'm, I'm, yes, I'm, I'm saying that the investment lost value. Please, please. I'm say, so he said that mm -hmm. if you had your bank account, mm -hmm. your personal bank account, mm -hmm. they were no more safe. 
please, people, people, the, the, please, please, now. the investment, and, and please, their money. please, 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 is the investment we are talking about. Oh, can you allow, 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 please, please, please allow, please allow, please, please. Was your personal bank account attached? No. So that is the point I'm making. But I had investments. Yes, so you should differentiate the two. Differentiate the two. Your investment in portfolios is not the same as your personal bank account as is alleging. That's the point I'm trying to make. I'm not saying the head card did not happen. Okay? I've never said, not said so. But to the extent that it's impugning your personal bank account, it's never happened. So let's be uh, fair to facts. So for me, all that we are talking about is for the good of this country. The things you are talking about, the lamentations. If you go back, they said worse things when President Kufo was in power. That is the most wicked president ever in the history of this country. Today, let me tell you. So I wish that, oh, when President Kufo came, this was the prices of all the things he's mentioning today. After our eight years of power, we had the prices had gone down lower than that of President Kufo. When you came, this is what you have done. Then people will take you serious. But with all the challenges, you know how to enumerate them. You have talked about them. We are this, we are that, we are that. In your electioneering campaign, as you are going around, President, former President Mama says that he's not going to promise anybody anything. He's not going to promise anybody anything. The only promise he made to us today is in Gukong Kitinkiti, and when he comes, he will legalize Okada. In Gukong Kitinkiti, I will legalize Okada. In 21st century. So for me, yeah. the things he's talking about today, yes, some of the things we've admitted them. Mm. Vice President uh, 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 Baumia has admitted a number of them, but their solution for, for them yeah. in agriculture, in technology, in this, how that will ultimately come together to give us a strong the confidence. I've the given you actually two more minutes in, 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 so, in, in, so, in the so, things we do. So let me round you up. On that. Yes. Let so me round please. You up. And let me give you on the on the yes on the three minutes each. Yes. On the uh, uh, the report that came, we as a political party, we've always taken serious every report, whether it's against us or for us. You look at people who are undecided. You cannot tell where the allegiance will be from now to the elections. Mm. So every report we will not run down any report. Because for whatever the report is, a lot of work might have gone into it. Uh, you need to look at it as it were. There are reports that you have to look into it. Make sure you have the details of it, the sample size, and to make an informed decision as to what we are going to do. So we in the MPP will not be head swollen. Okay. But the virtue of the fact that, look at Dr. Bamud Baumia. He's crisscrossing this whole country. He's working, selling his messages to the good people of this country. Our manifesto will be coming out. And then we'll keep pushing. we we'll keep explaining the issues and exposing the lies in the NDC. The okay. lies so they me, tell the good me, people of me, this country. I'll come and pick we'll this one from you um, on the last one because you, you uh, share please, boundary with. Please, I need to rebut this. No, I'm giving you... you um, the, the, so I'm, <laughs> adding, I'm adding one topic, but very briefly, three minutes, four minutes maximum mm -hmm. each. I'm adding the, the, the voter register and the clashes that we are, we are seeing and yeah. reporting on. So this latest one says a clash between supporters of the NDC and the New Patriotic Party at a voting transfer center in Yendi resulted in two people, including a media professional, sustaining injuries. And the altercation occurred when a group allegedly transported from uh, Tamale arrived in the constituency to transfer their votes on Tuesday. The situation intensified when NDC agents attempted to challenge the legitimacy of these individuals, leading to a violent confrontation. Among the injured was a media professional who is the manager of Sakara Radio in Yendi. He was at the center to monitor the voting transfer process when he sustained a razor blade cut on his neck during the melee. The incident highlights the heightened tensions and potential for violence surrounding the voting transfer process in the region. So we've seen those ones in, in uh, is it a Uchi senior? Um, how it comes this place and uh, now the Yindi one. But yeah, let me, let me will you rebut and you add that yeah, all in You form. see... Uh, today, the Deputy Minister of Information sits here and legitimizes people who have lost savings by saying it, wasn't, it didn't impact your bank account. When we were young, Sly, when you were young, I was young. Kwesi, when you were young, what did your, no, what did your parents teach you? Your parents taught you to save. 
So who in their right minds saves more money in their current account or, uh, than, than they, they have in savings? For the first time in this country, we had a former immediate past chief justice taking her chair to the Ministry of Finance and asking for her savings. And then the whippers snappers in Papa started insulting her. We were all in this country. And what is Baumia's solution to everything? Digitalization. You see, Baumia is like when you sit in a trotter. You see the person who sits in the trotter holding uh, the bag of medicines. Oh, yeah, do not see. Cacadro. Yeah, Cacadro in the world. Yeah, the bar soon fit here. Yeah, when you drink a drink, a crony beu. Everything, Baumia's answer to it is digitalization. Baumia has digitalized toilets. Yendidia, Yedaina. Baumia has digitalization for the food for children in their free SHS who haven't got food to eat. He has digitalized, so called digitalized food distribution for children who are not eating. Right? Mm -hmm. Their approach to every problem is kakedu. That is Baumia. So, like I said, the only poll that will happen is on December 7th. And we will see. As for the voter register, yes. mm. the EC had the effrontery. Eh? They are easy. Had the effrontery to tell us that they will not allow uh, party agents at the voter transfer. Because they cause commotion. Percy, what is the solution to people causing commotion in this country? We don't have a police force that we pay. The same security forces, the soldiers that they used to kill people uh, uh, um, in Thanos out. The same police and soldiers that they used to kill people, they cannot deploy them to stop uh, people from misbehaving. But what they were doing, the EC was trying to make sure that NDC party agents were not there so that they could transfer people, they could gerrymand. That is the basis of the violence. The MPP's attempt to transfer voters to marginal constituencies so that they can steal the election. You can't steal the election. Honorable. There's nothing you can do to steal the election. Oh, no. You are going to go. Well, so prepare to go, go peacefully, or we'll drag you up, kicking and screaming. You will go. <coughs> In fact, these are empty threats. Oh, Ele it's not a threat. It's not e a threat elections at all. Are, Mr. Mubeko, are you are need won. to account for your stewardship. Please. That's what Ghanaians want you to do. Please. You should stop beating war drums. Stop beating. I'm not beating any drums. Stop, stop beating those text please, messages. Oh, no, from please, uh, stop could it. you please allow me? Uh, let's stop. Let's, uh, beating war drums because when war drums are beaten, you will dance to the tune you are playing. Uh, look, what is happening for me? Our elections are guided by uh, uh, laws and rules, as it were. <coughs> All the people that are being transferred today, one way or the other, is unfortunate. Why should that happen in the first place? You have opportunity for voter exhibition and even challenge at that point. That's the point EC was making. And let me correct this, uh, making an impression that they are easy. Oh, they are easy. What? You, you see, have MDM. Oh, I, I needed to. They have, it, no, it's, don't it's correct the me. I'm for, it's, it's, it's the you EC have, for Ghana. The deputy EC uh, uh, it's Ghana uh, selection uh, commission. It's a member, it's a patron of Tesco. They have you paid up. Him. They have paid up MPP serial callers on the EC. Oh, no, Dr. Piani is please, what? Please. Uh, uh, it's it unfortunate. So, in the, so they shouldn't even go to the elections at all. If you think Ghana's election we and where we out. where we've gotten to out can be we manipulated go. by EC, then we couldn't have won 2000 elections. We couldn't have won 2016 elections as it were. So, for me, if you think that by virtue oh, of you don't believe that. You, you won the 2016 election, and yet you removed Charlotte Ose by oh. subterranean means, accusing her of things she hadn't done. Oh, no, the please, person please, who gave Charlie, the Charlie, 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 Charlie,
But the electoral have commission you is a legally instituted institution. Have you apologized so, uh, once, uh, once, uh, once we have uh, a legally instituted uh, institution. Uh, let me just allow you. Kojo, you, Kojo you, Kojo you, for. you should take your time. Or if you are not careful, your BP will rise this morning. So it's bad already. <laughs> That's why I don't think it it's bad of yeah. I, I will run to my messages. No, let me let mm. me let me finish this quickly. And I think it's unfortunate when we seek to bastardize the EC and turn around. Today, uh, I've seen former President Mahama again go around the world, say and talk about the credibility of our electoral system. What has changed? For electoral reforms, you can continue pushing for it. Once you're a stakeholder, we keep pushing for electoral reform. But you don't accuse the EC of trying to rig an election. Nobody. You see, when you go to elections, and after uh, 72 hours, you could not account for your own resource, and you have to lie and go to court seeking that you will get some favor from your party supporters and you are disappointed. It leaves you with nothing but bitterness. In 22, what did you do? So when we went to so court, there, is a, there, there was an impeccable so, so, evidence. But, oh, yo, so you when we so went to court, I'll, I'll, I'll jump to my message. Your evidence so, was impeccable. So, 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 gentlemen, please, please, please. I'll, 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 I'll move to my message. When we went to court, so, when we went to court, Alaji Haruna in when we went to court, when we went to court, we are judges on the Supreme Court agreeing with us. But in your case, it was 9-0. All the cases you raised was 9-0. You were embarrassed. Your national chairman today on his electoral tour, what he told your party people, that you guys didn't have any evidence. And the then chairman didn't have any evidence. They had to push him in a box to go and embarrass him. All right. You've forgotten so, about all these things. Alaji Haruna in a chairman says, Kosi, good morning. This is a wishy-washy survey that does not hold water. The MPP should just start writing their handover notes and stop paying people to spin for them. Ghanaians are sick and tired of the lies. Um, uh, okay. Good morning, Efri. NDC is running out of ideas uh, in the aim of misinforming Ghanaians in order to force them to go and vote for them. The era of misinformation is at an all-time high, and NDC is simply repeating the same style of 2008 propaganda agenda when they accused President Kufour of so many things but couldn't establish anything when they came to power. Efri, enjoying your suits. <laughs> Game as usual. Kudos. Governor from Hachu. Thank you very much, Governor. Musa Abatwa in Aswasi says, Good morning, Efri. The MPP government's failure to secure parliamentary approval for critical contracts such as the SML and the 5G rollout is a clear dereliction of breach of public trust. These contrast contracts, which carry significant national implications, should have undergone thorough legislative scrutiny to ensure transparency and accountability. The attempt by Majority Leader Afenyo Markin to engage in damage control is simply too little, too late, and does not absolve the government of its responsibility to follow due process. Musa Abatwa in Asamasi sent in that one. Isaac Kwame Batun, you didn't um, send the message. You just said hi. Okay. Prince Henry Kofiridia says, good morning. I'm still trying to understand for smart polls where the party NDC is in lead, but the flag bearer is lacking behind the Google masterpiece liar. As we speak, Toyota Vids, which was sold in 2016 for 20,000 Ghana cities, is now selling 80,000 Ghana cities. 14.5 kg LPG, which was 56 Ghana cities, is 26 cities uh, in 2016, is now 285. These are the metrics Ghanaians will be looking at in voting come December 7, 2024. Prince Henry in Kofredia sent in that one. Uh, McLean Desmond from Sashiri also says, John Mahama's current situation can be analog, uh, analogized uh, to that of um, a vehicle driver who, I'm sure you wanted to write, analyzed, um, who abandoned his vehicle after getting into an accident, causing a severe damage. Now, the owner of the vehicle then proceeds to repair and restore it to its original condition. Despite this, John Mahama still believes his best person to use the vehicle. I'll be very, it will be very unreasonable for him to expect the owner to trust him with the vehicle again after he left it in a damaged state. We will retire John Mahama come December 7. McLean Desmond. So she, we also sent in that one. Gaiji from Cantonment says, inform my good brother, Kujo Chumbuafu, that digitalization is the way forward. He should also expect DMB's land digitalization, which will promote transparency in the land records 
in Ghana. My regards to Honorable Sly Tete Gaiji from Cantonese sent in that one. Um, okay, I think. <laughs> Good morning, Chris. It looks like my name. Is... Can they allow me? Can they allow me? Please, honorable, please allow me. Please allow me. Looks like my namesake is intentionally disrupting the flow. What is this? Good morning, Chris. It looks like my namesake is intentionally disrupting the flow of the honorable deputy minister. Ghanaians have taken their decision already on the next president of Ghana. It will be either former president Mahama or vice president. Baumia Kujo Buafo in the United States of America sent me that one. He says, yeah. <laughs> So, um, thank you very much uh, for joining us this morning. We are not going yet. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Honorable Kujo Buafo. Cousin uh, Edward Hackman, he's one of your ardent viewers. Wow. He's hey, let me, let me say this, my and please, very good friend. Like his quiet. Today. Let us wish the black stars the best. Of course, of course. We, 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 we should we, bring back the three points. Let me, let me do two or three quick things. First of Quickly, all, to my, my, one is, yes. my, 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 my best is, friend, uh, Kofi uh, Kuma, Kumak, his mm -hmm. birthday today. And of mm -hmm. course, uh, Pamela Bano. Okay. It's a bad day today. And you of course, know, you know it's let me congratulate. You know from my hometown. Let me congratulate uh, uh, Basake, Holy Stars FC, for the qualification to the Premiership. I wish them well, and we're going to work very, very hard to remain in the Premiership. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, gentlemen. So, Kojo Chubuafu is former Executive Secretary for Regions Authority. Sylvester Tete is Botiano, English Amafro from Member of Parliament. So, you stick and stay with us. I'll do a quick turn. When I come back, the fine boy, of course, with GMG Trends, will be with me in the studio. So stay with us. Right, and of course, we are back from the break. Time now for GMG Trends. And you know when it's time now for Trends, you see the fine boy. Desi the fine boy. Good morning, Desi. Ciao, Chris. Uh -huh. How are you doing? A day, a it's day, been a minute. Day, a day, a day, a day, a day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been seeing you like only in the evening. You yeah. see that thing? <laughs> All <laughs> right. Nocturnal beans. Eh? Yes, sir. Actually, uh, and I don't quite know. Fly well. in the night, you know. <laughs> anyway, so welcome to the trends this morning. My name is Desi the Star Boy. Uh, we've got quick, quick ones uh, so that we can uh, get out of here. Let's talk about the Black Stars because uh, we've got a game today against Mali in Bamako. And that is a, a, a must win or draw game for the star. I mean, we, we do not have to lose that game because if you take the standings, it's not so good for us. We have one win, one loss, uh, so three points in there. Others have six, four, four, four. So the team is getting ready for the game this evening. And that is going to be, I understand, 7 p.m. And so this is, a, this is going to be a test for Tuado in his comeback and uh, putting this thing together. Um, for the qualifiers for the World Cup. Mind you, World Cup, you know, it has been classified destiny changing World Cup for, yes, because uh, US, Canada, <laughs> is good here. <laughs> so, please, we need you to play very well today and uh, we'll see how that goes with the team. So, the Black Stars playing tonight, take note of that. Obviously, we are all hoping that the team will be able to win the game um, at most, get a very good draw against Mali in Bamako and of course there are uh, others that will play uh, there's another one that will play against Central African Republic now away from that uh, Dooms on Wall these days the other time it was uh, Madame Esla when she was uh, giving a, a, a speech at the press uh, at the press center and then the light went off yesterday the vice president and uh, p presidential candidates for the NPP was also uh, <laughs> was talking to the youth, and then uh, the team come three. So let's let's watch that. Is that we are now covering the babies from the 17th of this month? We are going to start going around to the schools and issue Ghana card ID numbers. Is that we are now covering the babies 
from the 17th of this month, we are going to start going around to the schools and issue Ghana card ID numbers. Last last, the dooms will reach everybody. We'll be able to do it. But but on the most serious note, I mean, whoever was organizing that should have had the standby generator. It's one by generator. Yeah, right. I mean, no, in, maybe they, in event organizations. Yes, you should prepare for everything. For maybe anything that could happen. Yeah, be, because we have power issues now. Mm -hmm. But yeah, maybe you know the vice president for CZ that is to go on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, he has to be brought <laughs> yeah, to the times for the reality. Yeah. <laughs> so that has also been in the trends um, on Twitter this morning. The other thing has been going on since last week. I mean, since the weekend from Monday, Tuesday, still in there. Now, a lot of questions. Dutch passport or PhD? But, I mean, as, as I could see someone in academia, and uh, they mean Bisano, of course. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the Canada or PhD? Was it Canada Dutch, or Dutch? Dutch passport or PhD? Dutch passport or PhD? Sally? I think it's PhD. I mean, PhD. The PhD right. go take you there. You can go to any country you want. Yeah. Easily. I mean, not not that it's it's just like that, but easily. Once you get into whether you are an academia or you have a PhD and you are in the working field, yeah. and, I mean, most people get to travel because of the experiences and because of your yeah. academic yeah. background. There are lots of um, programs, projects, and job openings all over the world for people who have certificates yeah. who have experience and you'll go to I mean I've traveled yeah. quite a bit mm. it's not palatable I can say for those of you who go out to other parts of if you go to the UK for example and you don't have a certificate to work with you're worse off mm. you should go and see the places they are sleeping we have proper comfort here in Ghana I mean, we have problems. We have challenges. We get, we get issues. Bam. We get issues. But Charlie, <laughs> if you go to Seven Sisters in the UK and you go and see the council flats, people are sleeping in. Uh, uh, so, so as, 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 get we've the been, as we've been saying all week, it is your choice. If you can't, that's, that's fine. Yeah, but if you, you can, get the certificate. Get the, get, get the certificate Please or you it. can just decide to do whatever. You know the funny thing? They went to the universities, right? <laughs> <laughs> I, saw, I saw this thing where they went to the universities. Mm -hmm. When people were in the university, they're asking you PhD or oh, that's a passport. And Almost then people were Charlie. That's a passport. Charlie. So why are you in the school at first? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so that has also been your trends all week. Mm. And I'm just going to be, be around for a minute. So that's it for the trends today. My name is Desi, the star boy. And uh, yeah, that's it. If I'm a clean desk one from Sechi, you also NYE regional director yeah. in, in, in Sechi, Western North region, says I should greet you. Um, he says you are his namesake. He, fantastic. he watches you every morning. Fantastic, fantastic. Says, My brother, make sure that you, you greet the star boy for me. So, McLean, I have delivered your message. Shouts to McLean, Desmond. Yeah. <laughs> Sergio, 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 yeah. Oh, Papa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he's doing great in, in the region. Fantastic. The, the, the regional director for the National Youth fantastic. Authority. I mean, mobilizing the youth and making sure that, um, like we are talking about, yeah. people are not. Um, having it smoothly, yeah. but to but be at the helm of affairs, yeah. yeah, of course. Yeah. Of course of Shouts course. to you, Desmond McLean. That's it for the trends today. My name is Desi the Star Boy. I'll be back tomorrow Friday wrapping up the working week right here on GMG. I'm right. Thank you. you very much. And good morning to you, Dr. Obri Kran, uh, uh, Law School, University of Ghana Law School, a special uh, good morning to you. This morning, I didn't get the opportunity to be part of your birthday celebration, but once I'm here, I will still mention it. So, a uh, belated happy birthday to you, Dr. Obri Kran, and a very good morning to you. Good morning to you, Lawson. Uh, Katie, David, I've seen you. You've been with the show right from when it started. Good morning to you as well. And then Kofi by Japan, a special good morning to you. My name is Kosei Fri. Thank you very much for doing the watching and for your messages as well. We are here for God and Country. I did a show for Dr. Randy Abbey. Good morning to you all.